welcome you to my country, Balangar country. My ancestors, my grandfather Amos, Arawati country. Protect these fellas and look after them while they're on my country. Home Valley Station is the next camp on our list, mate. But before we get there, you go back out the Alquestro driveway, hang a left, and you're going to cross the Pentecost River, one of the most photographed sections of the Gibb River Road. We'll stop there and get a few photos and a bit of video, and we'll show you what it looks like driving across the Pentecost with the Cockburn Range in the background. I tell you what, you're going to love it. I'm not gonna lie to you, that uh, section from El Crestro to um, the Pentecost River crossing, oh my goodness, that was a uh, uh, very rough. It's not just even, it's not even corrugated, it's just rocks. So like, you could, I don't know how they would make that smooth, it was just rocks. That's only um, 30 k's done. We've got a long way to go. <laughs> oh, you can see why it's a caravan killer. Ah, look at that. As soon as we come across the Pentecost, there you go. Welcome to Home Valley Station, We're darling. Here. here we are now. We just got to Home Valley Station, and I'm pretty sure that wheel alignment I got done in Darwin is now absolutely cactus. But anyway, have a look at this when you drive in. It is really, really nice. Beck, you're going to go open the gate, my love? Sure Ready, steady, boom. Big Boab. Love it. I just want to show you around the campsite. So it was, it, it was pretty expensive, but eh? Yeah, 92 a, 92 a night. So $92 a night for a powered site for the fam. But I mean, you get a pool, yeah, there's um, uh, a restaurant, there's a playground behind us. And we've managed to jag two sites beside each other with this shelter in between. So if you're coming here, see if you can ask for S and T. That's what these are, sites so S and T. They're right across from the playground. You, yeah, too. playground's in the background and you can park here side by side. I'm gonna get the fire going, cook a couple of steaks on the grill. Just chill out. Me and Chris got a big day tomorrow. You're gonna love it. All right, big unit. What's the idea behind this? High grill, rib eyes. So the idea, so we had a bit of a flare up earlier on. <laughs> We've let the coals drop down. So all you want is a bit of heat and the smoke. You can thank a uh, good mate of mine, Aaron, for getting me onto this. But the idea is that you're gonna smoke the steaks for a bit. We'll flip them after probably 25, 30 minutes and then smoke them for another half hour and then we'll drop them down to sear them. And they're gonna be tickety-boo. You'll just belt them. He's pretty You're there's kidding. one other one he, I've seen this harvey, he's got better set than him. There's two with better ones than him actually. Can you yeah. go up to him? Oh. Oh. <laughs> like Maybe not. Yards, you can walk you past, first. But... Oh no, I see he doesn't like it there. Yeah. Look at the nuts on him. This is um take two for Chris on the steak. Take two. I, I think oh, yeah. the rack was a bit underdone. I'm just Really hoping this is an overdone, the but lamb you can't rack, really um, do a, a smoked steak, can you? Christoph. Yeah. Oh. Here we Congratulations, go. that is... Redemption song. <laughs> Redemption. <laughs> She's done it. Oh, that is beautiful. Smoked steak. Oh. Hey, we all deserve this we, after today. Oh, Absolutely. What a day. What a day. Absolutely. Do you want to fill everyone in on the, um, the steak story? Do you want to do that, or do you want me to do it? What's the steak story? The steak story. Or how we bought, like, four of oh. No. <laughs> if you're going to dig a hole, you do it. <laughs> you going to say giddy up? No. I think it's what about I think it's giddy up. I think it's giddy oh. up. Giddy up. <laughs> Gibby. 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 Gibby.
morning guys hey today we've got a big adventure plan me and chris here he is and come over here this is the man <laughs> sam birch hey say good day sam hey, what? Uh, so sam runs his own fishing tours out of kananara and home valley station today he's taking me and chris out on the old umbi track and we're going to do a bit of fishing a bit of hunting and a smoking ceremony but just a quick rundown mate about your tours and uh what are you going to take us and do today oh so i, I do 10 i do day trips out of kananara and home valley and windham I also do 10 day trips along the Carson River track, um, a lot of ex extreme foil driving and fishing. Um, so today we're going to go out, um, we're going to get some bush turkey and then we're going to do a smoking ceremony and head back in, have some brekkie and then we're going to head off fishing and then later on in the afternoon we're going to go sh shoot a cow, cut him up and tonight we're going to have a really big feed. <laughs> if that doesn't sound like a good day mate there's something wrong with you i can't wait you should see check him out on facebook have a look at the fish he catches mate if you can land us a metery today oh surely cool we <laughs> wish us luck <laughs> wish us luck right now it's time we're hunting this bush turkey so um we're just going to drive through the flats here and sam said what are, they got a white neck yeah white neck yeah feathery neck yeah and what are we looking for are they running when we uh, see them or are they no, just they'll stand up and as soon as they see us they'll Probably give us one shot, yeah. or two shots, have they been shot at before? <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then um, they'll probably fly, but hopefully we get them with that one shot. Alright, so we'll have a go. I'll have a shot first if I miss. Let's Chris has a go. Let's we'll see if we can't knock one over. I'll get the bow out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then I'll give you a look at the country anyway. It just looks like sort of spout, sparse scrub. We're just going to drive along this track. There you go. What, um, what sort of rifle is it, mate? Caliber wise? Just a 22 Magnum. Oh, 22 Magnum. Yeah. There you go. Browning. A browning. Let's see how we go. Bush turkey gets massive. What is that? Oh, pelican. pelican. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big pelican, too. I don't think we'll be having pelican on the fire. <laughs> you better not shoot that. Frowned upon. <laughs> I don't want to go right, are you eating the pelican? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Did that big one land at first? No, nah, missed that one. Yep, straight ahead of you. Yeah, see that walking? You're walking. Straight through there. Got him! Hey! Yeah, <laughs> we got one. We've been driving around for about half an hour this morning. I didn't think scrub turkeys would be so hard to get, but as soon as they seen us, they'd take off. Anyway, we're just cruising along and two of them land right in front of us. There you go. <laughs> How's me, mate? I haven't shot a rifle in about eight years and I just dropped him first shot. That's a bush turkey. There you go. Good shot. It's a first for me, mate. I reckon they're unreal eating, so we're going to... How do you do it? You strip the feathers? Oh, yeah, wow. so we'll hang him up. Yeah. And we'll plug him. Wow. Yeah. Uh, big that's bird. That's a good bird. Yeah. Hold that. Let's look. Spread the wings here. There you go. Wow. Hey, okay, it's a home valley scrub turkey. One shot through the neck. Hey. Perfect. Through here. Kill shot. Look at that. Look, you didn't even damage any of the meat. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you know. 70 meters. I'm not going to talk it up, but yeah. Oh. Well done. <laughs> Uh, Sam's going to give us a bit of a demo on how to pluck one. So you just start off, shady tree, wedge it by the neck, and then yep. what's, the, what's the trick with plucking the them? The trick is, when, once you shoot them, pluck them straight away, because once the body gets cold, it's hard to pluck. There you go. So, so which way do you pluck? Down? So Let's have a look. Now a wing, and yep. then pluck like that. Oh, yeah, right. And it's come off. So yeah, we pluck the whole bird. And then what's your favourite way to cook these? Oh, in a camp oven and a roast. Oh, so yeah. Camp oven, a bit of veggies, pumpkin, potato, onion, carrot. The size of the feathers on oh, it. I know, right? And oh. a bit of slow cook, yeah, so they cook away. <laughs> and what's the best part? What, which one should you be trying to get? Like the leg, the breast? Oh, the gizzard. The, the what? The, everybody go for the gizzard. <laughs> what's that bit? That's where the, uh, where the shit is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, well, now the breast is pretty nice. It's yeah. Really, oh, the whole bird is really nice. So. There you go. Oh, I'm looking forward. You want a drumstick? Yeah. Where are we? Well, that's one down. Now we just need a meter barra <laughs> and a big scrubby, and we'll be right. <laughs> anyway, we'll pluck this bird and get going. Mm. 
Fine dressed scrub turkey, mate. Yeah, nice and fat. Plucked and ready to go. See the yellow, the fat there. Oh, so, yeah. So you tell if the turkey's fat. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. That took honestly about five minutes, eh? Hey, hanging in the tree. Now she's ready for the camp oven. Yep. Welcome you to my country, Bollinger country. My ancestors, my grandfather Amos, Arawati country. Protect these fellas and look after them while they're on my country. On our country and keep them safe. Hopefully give them a big bear today. And um, watch, yeah, just watch over them and keep them safe on their travels to the next, gener our next stop and on to home. All right, oh, next stop we're going to hit some big barra. Well, hopefully we'll give it a crack. Sam's pretty keen. He reckons we're going to nail a couple of big stonkers, don't you? <laughs> yeah, we're going to get we're some gonna... <laughs> today, hopefully, when the tide comes in or even now. Uh, we're going to roll through here, but it's one of his secret spots here out the back of Home Valley. He's just going to show us what the Love Lux has got. This is his trusty rig, the Love Lux. Got a bit of mud bashing to get across there. So we'll see if we can go and better our PBs. My PBs are 72, yours is a... Around the 70 mark too. Around the so. 70, but I don't know if we'll beat it. What, what's yours, a dollar? 37. <laughs> One meter and 37 centimeter barra for this fella. I'll see, I'll get him to give me the photo, I'll put it in here. It is an absolute monster. <laughs> anyway, I'll be happy with, if we can beat our PB today and just hit like a some solid 80s. Mate, I'll be stoked. Actually, I'll be stoked with anything. Anyway, let's go. I'm gonna walk through this mud and we'll see what the Love Lux has got. Hello! <laughs> so first up we're going to hit some live bait that's the key to catching the big ones sambo reckons how are you going to get some live mullet we'll be fishing the pentecost how good is it mate have you ever fished somewhere as scenic as this <laughs> ah, Sam reckons it's tired, but it's gonna push up in about an hour and come over these rocks here. And that's when the barra are gonna buff these mullet, mate. A couple of hand lines, let them swim around. Oh, I can see some already, look at them. Yes, I'm feeling it, Sam. Oh, mate, that's how you throw a cast net. Far out. Oh, yes. Barrel lolly. Barrel lolly. Look at the red <laughs> eyes on him, too. Big bait, big fish. Have a look the at those stonkers, one. eh? Chuggy man. Oi, oi, oi. You're right. Oh, how was that for a throw? <laughs> oh, hey, he backed it up. We know we're in the right spot. When there's a little barra, there he is. Perfect. Look at that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we'll go and let him go. Yeah, fella. Go and grow into a meter. <laughs> Run him through the gear, Sambo. We got. Got some hand line, about 80 pound hand line with a 10 hole hook. Bigger the hook, bigger the fish. Got a sinker, size two, I think it is, three. Uh, I'll just hook the bait up. I'll do it soon, shortly. Cast him out, hopefully, a barrier get on. There you go. <laughs> I was just asking him his favourite lures in his box, and he's got the good old classic gold bombers, mate. So, pull on out for you. There you go. If I, that's about the only thing I don't have in this tackle box. I've got it at home. I'm just going to run a bit of a soft plastic or a little a little lure like that. We're just going to flick them around while we set these live baits out. And as the tide comes in. So the gold bomber. That's the go. Little shallow diver. <laughs> and then hard the big plastics. plastics. Yeah. Pre-weighted paddle tails. Look at that. Just slow roll them across the bottom. 
Feeling it. Yeah, feeling it too. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I'll right, show you this fishing spot. We're just going to walk along Flick Lures for a while and then we'll throw some liveys out. But look at this. On the banks of the Pentecost, mate. Coburn Range in the background. Hey, did you know, Sam just told me, it's spelt Cockburn Range, but it's pronounced Coburn. There you go. I learnt something today. Anyway, I've got my money on you, mate. First fish, Chris. -o. You reckon? Yep. You're a confident man. Big Bazzer on the Gold Bomber. Happy days. Now, you know what always happens? Whenever I go out with a guide, the guide always catches the first fish, so <laughs> it's up to you, Sam. <laughs> Need to get your lure in the water. Yeah. <laughs> On the gold bomber, son. Into him. Here he comes. Oh, nice fish. Oi, oh, yeah. <laughs> you did a big jump, too, eh? <laughs> that was sick. I was just oh. sort of lazily winding it in. Just... Oh, look at him go. He's a good fish. Oh, what was your PB? 70? 70, I, I reckon got him out. <laughs> oh, you've smoked Well, it. I haven't got it yet, so. <laughs> oh, he's a nice fish. Have a look at the colour on him. Wow. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. <laughs> oh, mate. Oh, how's the backdrop on it? Look at this. Oh. He's him up. He's a good fish, man. Wow. Oh. Look at this. <laughs> Wowee. Pinned him good. What a nice fish. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> How good is that, mate? Oh, home Valley Barra. Look at him. You know you got a good guide when he puts himself right in croc country <laughs> to drag your barra up the bank. Wee. <laughs> I let the bear jump in the water. There you go. Look How good that. is that? That is unreal. He's like a solid 70 something. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to get the mat out, eh? Yeah, I reckon so. Well done. I'll be mate. happy with that. On the bomber, too. Yeah. He picked it. Got the line bomber, so good. bomber, mate, never lets me down. <laughs> Birchie's hot tip. Yep. Oh, I love it. Stoked. Morning, Chris. Stretch him out. There we go. His lips touching. We come down. 71. Oh, 71 and a half. Mate, good fish. I was stoked with that. Love Happy it. days. That is yeah. unreal. Yeah. And look where we bloody caught it. <laughs> Paradise. <laughs> That's awesome. Mate, I'm stoked. High fives, nice. Birchies, all round. Yeah. yeah. Set, roll. Woo. Cheers. Number one. It's livey time. That's a cool little net, mate. I like that. Keep them alive, a little keeper. Yeah. Right. This will be the trick. What do you pin them through the head, the tail, or the back? Uh, it's under the back spine. Under the back spine. There you go. I've fished with live mullet a few times for Barrow, and they always seem to just miss the hook and like scale the rest of it. I'm like, you're kidding, aren't you? So, just hook it in the backbone. Oh, just yeah. bound the fin. Oh, back. When you chuck him in the water, it hangs like that. Yeah. Surely something will hit that. Send it. Send it. <laughs> Come back here. Just take him in the water, keep him low for you. Sort the line up. This line doesn't tangle up on me. He sent it. Yeah. Well, I'll be now. Metery time. <laughs> Metery time. I like that. You should get that. And just leave it a slack out. Yeah. What do you hold the reel with? No, just leave it. Put it like that. Leave it like that. When a fish hit it. Oh yeah. When a fish pull the line, especially if you're long away, it'll, it'll, it'll knock it over. It'll. Oh yeah. So you know, fish is on. Hopefully you're close enough to grab it. Oh yeah, and then it's a foot race. <laughs> it's a foot race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, we've been doing a bit of training over the last few days. Yeah, we're doing, a, doing a few hikes, we might be alright. Here we go, Justo has turned to uh, <laughs> cast with the hand line, watch this. Oh. Perfect! Look at that. I can port one. You'll be happy with that. <laughs> Just call me one shot. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next step, metre 20. Made it 20. What do you got, mate? Nice fish, Bart. Look at him. 
Hey? Yeah. A little white paddle tail. But yeah, this big one, like he was a solid 80, I reckon. Come up, tap this, missed it somehow. And then I got his little brother. Oh. Anyway, that's the one there doing the damage. On the board anyway. On the board. Nice right, work. Guy. Double hook up. I've got another little rat. Birchie's onto a good fish around here. I'll have to try and get down to him. Oi, here we go. <sighs> oh, he's a nice fish too. Well done, mate. Yeah, they're coming on now. <laughs> They've started firing up as that water's coming over the barrage or the rocks. They're really starting to do a lot more follows and getting heaps more hits. He's a good fish, Birchie. Yeah. Look at the colour of him. Happy days. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Right. See if I can't help me up the rocks and we'll have a look at this fish. I've brought Birchie's fish back up. He's too keen to keep fishing. But I've thrown him on the mat. And it's another cracking barra. Look at that. 57, that one. Beautiful saltwater barra in the Pentecost River. Mate, oh, I can't get over this fishing, eh? They're just starting to come on the bite pretty hot down there now. So hopefully we can land a few more and upsize them, eh? Look at this. All right, well, that was a good little session, lads. Hey, yep, knocked yep, over yep. two good barra, two keepers. We caught probably, oh, I reckon we caught four or five more. Lost a few lures and we got some good hits as well, some good follows. So they were on for about an hour there and we got a couple of good fish to take home. So now Sam's going to take us out and get uh, what he calls a killer. Yeah, going to shoot a cow. Yeah, so. Cut it up out there. He, um, Sam and his family live off the land out here. So they come out and get meat whenever they want. And you share it around between your family. Yep. And uh, today he's going to share some with us, show us how to butcher it out in the field. So we'll go and drop our fishing gear off and we'll go find one. What do you reckon? Let's go do it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there you go. That's how you chase down a killer, mate, just with the 22 out the window. And um, you find the cows. There's plenty of bulls out here, but the bulls are no good, mate. No, too tough. Too tough, eh? So yeah. um, I'm not going to show you the whole butcher, and I'll just show you how it ends up. So Sam uses everything down to the liver, the kidneys. They eat the whole animal, and he takes it home and uh, shares it around with the family and that. So, And we're going to have a couple of steaks as well. And there you go. Some Home Valley wild beef, mate. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll show you how many cuts we end up with. But I'll tell you what, it's good fun. And I'm glad I wasn't in my car bashing through there, right? Eh? <laughs> well, it's only half an hour and Sam's knocked up the whole beast. I'll just give you a look. We've got every cut from scotch fillet to ribs to eye fillet to brisket. Kidney. All these two eskies. And he's got a bit of kidney and stuff for us to try later on too. We'll fry it up. Anyway, that's the, the day just about done. We're just gonna go home, cook up this turkey, a couple of steaks, and then sit around and have a beer, mate. So, Ooh. cheers for the day, Sambo. No worries. It's been bloody good, eh? Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, bro. No worries. Thank you. All right, so it's dinner time after a mad day of fishing and hunting. Uh, we were gonna do a camp oven, but we run out of time. So what I've done is we're gonna show Birch and his family the way we eat dinner, and mainly we just serve it up on a platter board. We cook a bit of everything and have at her. So check this out. Yum. Oh. What do you reckon of that, Birchie? Can't wait to get some, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. All right, lovely to meet you, and yeah. thanks so much for taking us out, mate. Um, again, I can't be more appreciative, and I'm really, uh, I'm just stoked to meet yeah. you, mate. No, yeah. it's my pleasure, mate. Happy days. Get on to Birchie. You can have a bit of this, eh? <laughs>
So as we're heading east to west, we're leaving Home Valley. Our next spot is going to be a Sconadale and Bray. What do you reckon of Home Valley, boss? That was bloody unreal. Birchy made it, I reckon. <laughs> He's the man. I reckon the power, the pool, the aircon. Aircon. Full package, bro. Hey, um, how many scones are you going to eat? Four. Bray Station mate, 110 k's from Home Valley, the road's been really good to tell you the truth, sat on about 50 to 60 k's an hour, now this is why we're here, homemade scones, jam and cream, happy days, I'll take you in and get into a few eh? You ready for some scones Missy Moon? I Moo? am, I am, I love a good scone. She does mate, she loves my scone, eh? Oh my god. No, this is me, what do you mean? It's going in the bloopers. No, it's a good looking scone isn't it? Oh, I'm making a bum. My bum? Who calls their bum your scone? Yeah, I know. I don't know what I was thinking. Mine's in the gutter, dear. Yeah. There you go. I'm used to that. Hello. Right, scones. I wonder if they do coffee. Do you reckon they do coffee? Yeah. I reckon they would. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it's all right. She's always up me for something. Tell me about the scones, mate. All right, so the scones are six dollars each, and yep. they come. This is one scone, and you get your jam and your cream. Ooh. And then I got a mango frappe for the kids, and they were eight dollars each. There you go. I met a couple of people in the car park, and they reckon these scones are as good as they've been talked up to be. So I'll tell you in a second. <laughs> is it a good scone? Yummy. <laughs> All right, moment of truth, mate. Are they warm? Mm. They don't feel warm. Yeah, they are. They are. Mine's still warm. Mine's still good. I tell ya. That's a good scone. Did we get one each? Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. That's warm, that one. Mm. Do you want me to cut yours? Mm. Are you good? All right, hey, Bill's going to show you something new. He's making a scone burger. Yeah. Like that. Right. Yeah. Here we go. Now show us how it's done, Bill. Ready? Pick up a big bite. Oh, oh, oh scone burger. Oh. <laughs> mm, yummy. That's a good idea, mate. I like that. Good effort. <laughs> Alright, hey, um, we've pulled up at Ellenbray and we've copped our first bit of carnage, mate. But hardly. If this is as bad as it gets, I'm happy. What's happened is my um, Anderson plug has fallen out of my um, vehicle here and just dragged along the ground for a bit and it's chewed off the pins and the rest of the plug. So what that does, that charges up the DC to DC charger in the van. So when I'm driving, it pumps the batteries back up. Um, anyway, luckily I was just talking to people on the way in and I said, um, oh, my bloody thing fell out. And old mate goes, well, you're in luck. Look at this, I've got a spare one. So anyway, I'll show you how to do that. Normally I like to solder them in for better contact. <laughs> This is take three. I did try and solder it in, it didn't bloody work. So I'm just gonna show you how to crimp it. All you have to do is jam your wires in, into the crimp. Now you're probably gonna lose oh, a few of them because I don't have the side, the right size crimp, right? But it's gonna have to do for the bush out here. And then use your pliers and crimp that bit there and spin it over, crimp it on the other side. Nice and tight. There you go, just so the wire ain't gonna fall out. And I'll just have to fix it up properly another time. Get some solder in there. Ugh. Happy days. I'll wrap some um, tape around that and we'll plug it back into the Anderson and back into the car. Happy days. First bit of carnage on the gib, Chris -o. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse. At least I can fix it and hopefully we don't get anything else along the way. Well, I lost a bag of apples, but that's all right. A bag of apples? Yeah, all over the van floor. Oh, at least you can pick them up. 
Yeah, kids will still learn. <laughs> All right, righto, ready to hit the road. Ellen Brace, scones done and dusted. That's another Gib River bucket list item ticked off, dear. Yeah. Hey? yeah. Um, I'm going to be, because we've been around the country a bit, I'm going to call, um, they're not the best scones in Australia. I'm going to call Ballara Station the best yeah. scones in Australia. And honestly, I grew up eating a lot of scones. <laughs> Don't get us wrong, they're bloody good family. scones. They are bloody good scones. Yeah, they're nice. They're a nice treat when you're on the gib. But, yeah. but if you haven't, if you want a top scone race in Aussie, we're in Australia, Aussie, get to Ballara Station and have some there, mate. Yeah, I reckon, we like those ones. I reckon they've nailed the jam and cream ratio to scone. Just that little bit better. Mm. Anyway, that's, that's just, what it's all about. It's just it's our opinion. Jam to scone ratio. Yeah. Anyway, right. now we're going to um, we're making our way up to Drysdale River Station um, because we're going up to Mitchell Falls and Honeymoon Bay. But um, we're just going to find a free camp somewhere along the way there and see how we go. How much did you spend then at Elmbro? Um, seventy-two dollars for eight scones and three mango frappes. There you go. Which is just like a little mango smoothie. Yeah. Mm. Uh, 72 buckers anyway so we're going to find a free camp in Savo um and i've just fixed that anderson plug so we're good to go well eight scones by the way was for like two families yeah you'd be hard up eating two each they're big scones oh they're massive yeah you just need one scone all right it's enough yeah. anyway <laughs> we came up with a new term actually while we're there we're going to call ourselves sconnoisseurs <laughs> get it actually chris made that up i can't yeah. take credit for it all right we're out of here First, First bit of carnage, mate. About 200 k's in, and uh, that tire just let go. Of course. Wow. Anyway, a bit of background on that though. Beck did decide to put a nice carb in it in the shopping centre. I did in Darwin. not. So, I did no, not. No, kind of know where it was. I didn't even. So I kind of thought it might let go, but okay. anyway, she's gone. So we'll have to change this one out and see if we can't uh, oh get a new tire for it uh, and limp through. There we go. We're nearly at Drysdale River Station, so we might be able to get an old tire or something. Yeah. The rim. I think it's the rim should be alright. I think we pulled up just in time. Yeah. I felt it go. We heard um, it straight and away. We stopped without damaging the rim, I think. So we'll change it out and we'll get to Drysdale and have a look. <laughs> Keep positive. That is destroyed. Isn't it? Wow. That is a good one. Ah. Here we go. Tires off. Jeez, it's hot, I tell you. Spin these back on. Oh man. I was really hoping not to shred a tire. Like, get a puncture, yeah. You can just plug it, but <laughs> there's no plug in that, mate. Man. Oh well, good practice. Here's hoping we don't do another one. Alright. Oh, we'll put that down on the deck and tighten them up, eh? Mm -hmm. That's it, mate. <laughs> what do you reckon? About 15 minutes, had it done? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Say lunch. Let's get going. Righto, oh, no, we're away. Hey, 15, 20 minutes, or maybe half an hour. I'm trying to talk myself up. Anyway, we're good to go. Uh, I'll tell you what, I bought some of these in Kanalara. Get onto them. Oh, mate. get onto these. I'm too. hot and bothered. And like <laughs> yeah, this cotty sparkling court. Mm. Oh, mate. Best, next, next, the second best thing, apart from a cold beer. If I wasn't driving, I'd be cracking into a tin, don't worry. Yeah. Anyway, I think we're about half an hour from the turn off to um, Drysdale. So we'll just cruise in there, eh? And see if we can't pick up a spare tyre. Geez, that'd be nice. Ever wanted to know what the corrugations on the Gibb River Road look like? <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> they are harsh, man. Not all of them like this, but some of them just at that bad spacing, eh? Just can't find a happy speed, you just gotta crawl over them. Anyway. <laughs> Now you know what that looks like. 
All right, we've made it to the turn off, mate. So Derby one way, Columbaroo the other. We're going to Columbaroo way, right? But I just want to show you on the map here at the rest stop, it tells you on a map where you are. So here we go, Kununurra, we came out this way, through Emma Gorge, down to Orcrestro, come out to Home Valley, and then from today, we went from Home Valley to Ellenbray, Ellenbray to the turn off here. And it tells you that um, we are 187 kilometers, no, 178 kilometers we've done today. So there you go. And then from here, we go, we are at the turn off here and we go all the way up past Drysdale River up here. We park and we drive into Mitchell Falls. We come back out, then we go up here through Columbaroo up to Honeymoon Bay. There's Honeymoon Bay there. So there you go. So from here, Drysdale River is 59 k's uh, and then Columbaroo is 260 k's. So we've got another 260 k's to go to get up past Honeymoon Bay. Hopefully I can get a spare at Drysdale or something. Anyway, there you go. That's a VAR. There's some good info on those signs and it. Good to take a photo of them, I reckon, because it tells you the distances between everything. So you sort of know how far you've got to go at each time. Anyway, let's get cracking. There's a good little free camp up the road here. But um, someone told us about and you can go and have a swim and that sort of thing. So we'll stop there for a bit of lunch. Oh, yes, I just spotted a sign. Check this. Drysdale River Station, fuel, phone, tires. Yes. Happy days. Ah, oh, I need you, my friend. Giddy up. New merch time, guys. Check it out. This is our tinny mission pack. So I'll pull all the stuff out and show you, but um, thanks for your support. I know you're going to get around this, and you guys who love the series are going to love having some of this on your own travels. So what you get is a can cooler. Fit a whole box of cans in there. It's insulated, good quality. You get one of our trucker caps. Um, you get a new neck roll and a fishing shirt. TF style, road trip in Australia. This is a polo, so a zip at the front, long sleeve, long sleeve, uh, lightweight, nice and cool. One thing about that is probably upsize. So if you're a large, get an extra large and so on. Heaps of sizes for the kids as well. And then you get a double insulated wall cooler. Look at that. Unscrew the top, put your tin or your stubby in there. Keeps it cold for hours, mate, out in the tinny. There you go, chuck it all in there. That's the tinny mission pack. That's what you'll get in the mail. Um, with Christmas coming up, postage has got to be hectic around the country with all the COVID delays. I reckon get in now, order some. I only got a limited number of these, so if you're a mad fan of the series, um, jump on. We'll have one on the Christmas tree. Be happy days. Thanks, guys. <laughs> And just like that, mate, we are set up at a free camp at the Grid River, cracking a cold tin. And I'm going to take you for a look down the water, mate. The kids are already down there swimming. And this is a mint campsite. Yeah. It's private, it's just off the road, it's shade. And I'll tell you what, it's going to go down well. Got a gib tip for you, too. Gib tip number one don't bring a wash shirt. <laughs> and I'll give you a gib tip number two don't let your wife drive over gutters in the Kununurra car park before you hit the gib. Race down the track, here we go. Whoa, through the bush. And look at this, mate. No. Rope swing, fresh water, no crocodiles. And it, oh, the temperature is just delicious. Look at that, you can look all the way up the creek. You can swing back this way, and we're the only ones down here. That's so bloody good, eh? Like El Cuestro's good, Home Valley's good. This, this is even better. Check. Oh, oh, that's so cool. Look how cool that looks. Hey! Give Haynes your race. Ready, Haynes? Hey! Oh, hey, I'm done, buddy. Well, we've got to do this bush turkey that we shot the other day with Birchie. We've just sort of trimmed it up a bit into some pieces and we're going to cook it on the Weber because either the Weber or our grill rack over the fire, if we split this damn thing, it was too big. So we've had to cut it down into quarters. But Chris is going to run you through what we're doing. I reckon it's going to be damn delicious, mate. Yeah, so like I said, we just basically boned out what we could and got it into more manageable portions. And then we're basically just going to oil it up, give it a bit of a Texan rub. Absolutely. And then grill it skin side down, crisp it up. Nothing like rubbing the turkey, bro. <laughs> Come on, mate. <laughs> and then we'll um, 
<laughs> flip it in the tray and uh, I've been saving that one just for you. Yeah, years. thanks for that. <laughs> I was on a roll too. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, we'll crisp the skin up and then we'll um throw a few spuds in and flip it over and let it cook through and go. be hunky dory. But, uh, Something I didn't know, um, have a look how red it is. It's kind of like, I thought turkey would be like, you know, like if you buy a turkey, it's yeah, white meat, shirt, it? but it's actually red meat. So the one hot tip I got off Birchie's missus was to make sure you season it really well, cause it's a bit gamey. I reckon it's beautiful, but it's a bit gamey. So use a lot of seasoning, salt, pepper, garlic, um, Texan smoked and charred rub, which is what I've got. I reckon that'll be delicious. Anyway, so that's it. We'll do that. We'll throw it on the web with a few veggies and, um, We'll let rub, no, oh, we'll let rub, we'll let Chris rub his turkey. <laughs> right, <laughs> get rubbing, bros. And then you get your um, smoke flavour through it too. A bit more traditional if you cook it on a fire, I think. Oh. Hi, my name's Jack. What are we eating, Rui? I'm eating this. We're eating bush that's turkey. turkey. Well, right, you get in there and have a look at this. This is the finished product of the bush turkey. All, right. All we did was do up a few spuds with salt and pepper. But have a look. I'm going to, um, oh, I've carved a bit of this off. Have a look at that. It's actually red meat. Crazy. That's blown me away, but it tastes delicious. It's like a, a mix of turkey and beef. And we did, did a bit of Texan rub on it. Awesome. Hmm. Okay, have some. Here you go. I like this. Does it go good? Mmm. Mate, it's ridiculous. Wow, it's so good. I like this. I can see why Bertie rates it as like his number one chicken feed. Wow. Those are out of control. If you didn't know what scrub turkey tasted like in the Kimberley, I'm going to tell you. It's like out of control. <laughs> No. Wow, great! <laughs> no, I've I've no words for how good it is. You've got red meat, you've got white meat. It's my favourite. Chris, meat. Chris is from Nullumboy, and up there, Magpie Goose is like the duck's nuts. Yeah. And he, he just said to me, he goes, "This is way better than Magpie Goose." Hundred percent. This is unlike anything I've ever. <laughs> this is life. my favourite meat. That's actually my. I favorite I feel like meat Barney either. Rubble, but. Mate, I don't even know what to say. I don't, I don't know. It's like the biggest bird. Wow. And we've cooked it on the fire and it's it's ridiculous. Mate. I'm, it's, I'm it pretty is, much already full. It has fed eight people with just a side of potatoes. And we're, we're still just like in awe of this bird. You guys so you have to get up here. Mate, no, honestly, it is one of the best feeds I've ever had. And we cooked it on the fire. So scrub turkey, home valley, birchie. Thank you, Birchie. Oh, I Legend. didn't. When you said this was like one of your favourites, <laughs> I was a bit sceptical. I don't know why, but. It was bang on, wasn't mate, he? You've blown my mind. It is actually. the nicest meal. Anyway, get onto it. <laughs> this is a leg. You guys that, are making me laugh how that much is you're a drumstick. With this it's, mate, you, <laughs> eat it! <laughs> look at the size of that drumstick. <laughs> it's time for bed, but you can't eat a bush chook without drinking a bush chook. What do you reckon? <laughs> Bloody eye. Cheers, lad. how we do it. Plug it into the USB. I put my phone on selfie mode as a mirror and I do it outside so I drop all the hair on the ground. There you go. Hot tip for you. Hot. So we've made it to Drysdale River, uh, only 69 k's from our free camp last night. The road had its bits and bobs, you know, it was good for a while and then it was rubbish for a while. Anyway, here's the campground as you drive in. I'll put my um, window down. There's just a big sort of grassy paddock out the back there. Yeah. And then um, up here is the bar and you can get fuel and hopefully I can track down someone to give me a new tyre. 
It's a little shop here right too. Size. Yeah, a little shop here for some, some sort of supplies. You'll, I doubt there'd be much. We're in luck. Yeah. <laughs> How good's this? So Drysdale sell tyres, and we're lucky that they had one 285 left. It's a BFG, um, and it actually worked out being alright. It was 625 bucks. Oh, okay. For a new tyre on the rim, changed over. I'm pretty happy with that. I was picking at least seven or eight hundred because you pay five hundred a tire anyway, even in a major city. So there we go. Same size, good brand. And now we got a second spare for our can't trip be up. picky on the give, mate. We can't. But fuel was two dollars fifteen, two dollars mm. eighteen. So that's not too bad. They got supplies in the shop there, like milk and bloody biscuits and stuff like that. Yeah, you deodorant. can book flights from here. You can camp here. Um, and the tire shops out the back. They do tires and batteries. And we also got our permit. So. It cost us 110 bucks, is that right? Yep. For our Mitchell for Falls family. area permit for a family. So. And which these is... guys were, what were you? 90? 90. 90 uh, bucks. Kids under five are free. Oh, oh I'm laughing. Bloody hell. Anyway, it's another permit we didn't know we needed until we Why got here. But... And Ian, Ian's a bit of a dry character, but he um, he also gives us a bit of good info about uh, some, yeah. Uh, yeah, some indigenous art that we'll find further up the track. So anyway, all in all, a good stop. Got a second spare. It's loaded up on fuel and you can get water here. Yeah, we're ready to go. We're going to King Edward now. Happy days. Here's the rubbish tip. There you go. So, as you come out of Drysdale River Station, head straight across and there's a rubbish tip there. So, you see plenty of signs up here about not taking, or don't leave anything, but um, footsteps and don't take anything but photographs. and. I think rubbish is the big thing they're trying to get rid of up here. Like, if you've got all this gear and you can travel all the way up here, surely you can keep your rubbish until you can find a dump point like this, right? And chuck it out. Anyway, we're going to unload now and we can keep all our rubbish from our trip up and we can stop in here on the way back and dump it off as well. Happy days. Just make sure you stop in and do it, eh? Good effort, dear. Love your work. <laughs> she hates it when I make her get out and video stuff. Anyway, it's all part of it. It's just turned into a nice little drive as you're only sort of a kilometre or two away from King Edward. It goes to like these water holes and like back to really lush trees and pandanus again. Check out this little water crossing. That was really pretty. I know, it's so nice. So calm, it reminds me a bit of Lawn Hill National Park. Oh yeah. All right, come and check it out. This is where we've ended up camping at King Edward River. So if you drive around the campsite, there's all these massive big sort of cutouts in the grass, big enough to fit two or three or four vans in most of them. There's not much cover though in the way of shade and stuff. So be ready for a hot arvo. But we've pulled up in here. I've got a fire place in the middle. If you go, we'll show you down this way. There is a little walking trail to like the swimming hole and the King Edward River. So there you go. You check in, it's self-registration at the front. It's 35 bucks a night for a family. Uh, we've got to go and do that. We came in here and found our spot first. And we'll go back up and pay. And it'll be two nights here. We'll do Mitchell Falls tomorrow, spend another night, and then we'll keep punching north. Anyway, take it down the swimming hole. King of the River Waterhole, mate, what do you reckon? Pretty darn nice. <laughs> oh gosh. Probably the best way to wash away the dust in the corrugations of the drive today. Come and have a look. I'll take you in for a swim. <laughs> Beck's still too scared. She reckons no, it feels I've like there's crocodiles in. It's there is not. It is so good. Have a look at this. <sighs> Who's coming for a float, kiddos? Oh, that's so good. <laughs> what do you reckon? Good, good water hole? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's so nice, isn't it? Oh, you're all drowning me. You're all drowning me. That's not funny. That's not funny. <laughs> What'd you find? A croc. Show me. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. It's a little fishy down the bottom there. That's sweet. We're just about to go for a swim down there too under the waterfall. We'll go and swim with old Crocky. Chris has gone for a swim. 
of his underwater camera to see if he can't get a photo of it. So I'll show you from up here. He's down here in the water. I'll see what the freshie does. Here's Chris. There's the freshie. Can you see Daddy, my crocodile? Oh, he opened his mouth. Wow. <laughs> He's bloody mad, eh? You wouldn't catch me in there. Even though it's a freshie, I still wouldn't be getting that close to it. We got the hot tip from old Ian at Drysdale. He reckons it's the best rock art you'll find in the Kimberley. You reckon we should believe Ian, Chris? <laughs> no comment. No. <laughs> he was uh, dry as a chip, old Ian. But anyway, we're going to walk through here and see if we can find it. Because if he's right, and it's the best rock art in the Kimberley, I can give you a look at it. It's a nice little walk, though. Have a look at this. It looks like um, aliens or something. Check it. It's a bit spooky, eh? Wow. Check him out. What? That's amazing. Look at that. Oh, that's pretty impressive, eh? Where are we? Oh, look, up here. It's like a big kangaroo. Oh, oh. I reckon you're right, Ian. That's probably the most impressive art I've seen. That's crazy. Amazing. Nice. The hooks make it. Alrighty, so super early start this morning. We are gonna head up to Mitchell Falls and um, try and get the chopper up. And if that doesn't work out, we'll have to walk up and back. But that's the plan. We'll try and ride the chopper up. The kids are excited, we're excited. But you have to leave early. We've been told by others that have come back from there that it's close to a two hour drive from the King Edward River Camp. <coughs> to Merton's campground, which is the base of the uh, Mitchell Falls Walk. Anyway, I'm keen. Sun's just coming up the background there behind us. We're ready to go. See you later, King Edward River. Hello, Mitchell Falls. We're not at the falls yet. We have just kicked off the walk and track. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, that road in from the campground at King Edward to here was 76 Ks of some pretty rough stuff, wasn't it? It was horrible, It actually. was fairly horrible, and it did take us nearly two hours to do it, so make sure you allow that. So that's two hours each way it's gonna take us to get here. Um, it's just corrugated, mate, and rocky, like in a few sort of windy sections as well. Anyway, enough of that, we're here now. Uh, what we're gonna do, we're going to walk up. We we're hoping to do it the other way around. We're going to fly up, hike back. But because we haven't had reception, it's too hard to book stuff. Yeah, and we have to have a chopper that, they've only got one chopper that can fit five people. So, um, yeah, it kind of runs only at certain times and- It was already booked. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. We basically matter. had two options, so. Yeah. So we're going to hike up and then fly back at 12.15. Now, it's about 4.3 Ks each way. That's off the info brochure and it takes anywhere between two and four hours. Hmm. So I think for us, it'll be about two hours because our kids are pretty good. But anyway, make sure you allow yourself enough time. Uh, but it'll be good. We'll be able to fly back and be home for lunch, mate. Have lunch in the ute. Then we can tackle the two yeah. hour drive home again on that rough track. <laughs> Better check this out because this is gonna literally be Beck on the way back down. Have a look. Yeah. <laughs> what a view, mate. I know, it's amazing. I'm so excited. Uh, Wow. 
what? Wow. How's <laughs> that? Oh, I reckon this is like the halfway mark, but look at that cliff, would ya? Are you actually serious? It makes you feel like all giddy just standing on the edge of it. Oh, my knees are going weak. Oh, that's pretty impressive. We've just made it to the chopper landing pad, which is here. Hang on a sec. Just behind me. We just watched one land. How long did that take us, mate? An hour and 20. There you go. And we now, took it pretty easy. We did, but is this the end of the run or what? Where no, we we've got to go up over this cliff and that's where you see the iconic Mitchell Falls photos. Uh -huh. Right. So yeah, and we'll just come back to the helipad at 12 and do our flight home. Wow. That's Mitchell Falls. I tell ya, it was not a bad walk at all. And I'll tell you what, how beautiful is that? <laughs> Oh yeah! Wow. And then you can hear the, I don't know if you can hear the choppers, but they're buzzing around above us. We're gonna get on one soon. I'll show you what it looks like from a chopper. Yeah. That's yeah. insane. It takes so such pretty. good photos. I'll take a few photos now and drop them in. Well done. Boom, we did it. Boom. Four and a half Ks. Mitchell Falls ticks it off the list, mate. Done. Tell Can't you what, we're finally here. It's not easy to get here. It's a long way, <laughs> but we've done it. We've done it. We're stoked. <laughs> For this or what? Oh yeah, I'm so pumped. <laughs> <laughs> right, where we go? Look at this, we're all strapped in, ready to go. Got my visual falls. I don't know if you can hear me, it's bloody loud in here. We've got no doors, Jack's in the front seat. Can you believe it? Jack has got the front. Bloody fun, mate. Oh. That was so much fun. Really, really, well worth it, mate. That yeah. was shit. Hey, right, come and have a yarn to old hop along, Harry here. <laughs> Hey, tell me a story, mate. You didn't make it to Mitchell Falls, I did, did you? I had a big stack with a kid on my shoulders. It was hectic. <laughs> big stack? What's, look at this. It doesn't got, even look bad. You've got two little band-aids on there. I know. I've had it on ice for a couple of hours. <laughs> I've had four beers. Um, Anyway, he missed out. I'll show him some photos so we can get the feel of it. <laughs> Poor bugger, paid for the permit, drove that stupid track all the way in. Oh, you just remind me I paid for the permit. <laughs> and then he fell over a K into it. Um, I'm gonna, I've got a riddle for you. How do you put 10 years of wear and tear on your car in under two hours? Drive to Mitchell Falls. Yeah, <laughs> he's onto it. Oh my God, that's my most least favorite road in Australia, mate. I'll be lucky if my canopy survives the gib, I reckon. Oh, I am just... It's relentless. Yeah. I'm going to crawl right over my car now because I've got a lot of new knocks and squeaks that I didn't have beforehand. Yeah. I don't know that much. Anyway, well earned beer coming up right now. How many you had? Four. Four. I've got some catching up to do. <laughs> you do.